Primes versus Zooms. Now, yesterday I got done making a video highly praising that gigantic Nikkor 200 to 500 millimeter, upon which a couple people thought they'd jump my bones. Wait a minute, that sounds bad. Uh, <laughs> listen, there's no inherent contradiction. I told you there are three distinct areas when it comes to lenses. We have prime lenses, and then we have zoom lenses, and then we also have everything that falls below 28 millimeters in a prime lens. That is the borderline. Everything below 28 millimeters, you're, the sky's the limit for a high element count, uh, aspherical elements. It's just the nature of the beast. I mean, uh, ultra-wide lenses have improved over the past 25 years. Primes have not improved except for coatings. But only thing the coatings allow for is for us to create more elements to uh, create better uh, lack of chromatic aberration, uh, better corner-to-corner uh, -corner sharpness. But primes, I mean, I, I showed you like a 133-year-old lens design like the Cook triplet. That lens has basically been recreated, and here in a week or two, I'm going to start showing you uh, some of the uh, Cook triplet lenses, some of which are in the 20 and $30 range on eBay. Those lenses are divine. I mean, they make a soap bubble bokeh. They are people like, holy crap, you know, where do I get a lens like that? That is amazing. It's like, well, they don't make that stuff anymore. Well, they make a modern version of it, but it's really expensive by uh, Meyer Gerlitz in Deutschland. Um, this is the best lens that I own, period, that I've ever owned. It's a Distagon Zeiss 35mm f2. Primes exist for a reason. Now, Nikon, where Nikon is really effing up right now, and people thought... The video that I made yesterday about the 200 to 500, which has uh, 19 elements in it, it's like, oh, you're praising low element count lenses, and here you go making a, a video talking about how great the Nikkor 200 to 500 is. That thing has 19 elements in it. Well, you're damn right. It's a different way. You know, I don't. If we were to have a Olympics of uh, normal uh, sized people, I can't judge them the same way that I judge like if we had an Olympics of like of little people. I know you can't call them midgets. Like imagine like a little people Olympics. You know the scale and the measure of judgment would have to be different. There are different criteria for judging zoom lenses versus primes. Primes exist for a reason. That's one of the serious things I've been ragging on Nikon about because uh, prime lenses, I mean, other than autofocus and image stabilization, prime lenses, there's only so many different ways you can make an apple pie. Prime lenses have not improved in over 25 years. They really have not. I don't give a crap what any of these cockroaches, these hissing, hissing cockroaches on the internet forums tell you. People that know a lot better than those idiots people that like use and still own really old Zeiss and uh, Leica lenses they're like three element four element five they're like screw these people you know this lens produce people see lenses and images from those lenses are like holy crap this must be a new lens and the guy's like no this is a 60 year old Zeiss lens you know yeah <laughs> people think oh it's a modern lens it must be better no you know, uh, like the 200 to 500 that I got done praising, I mean, that lens was impossible 20 years ago. That is where you, you know, go <laughs> to modern lens you got design. You go, yay, bravo! You know, it's got amazing VR. You can handhold that bitch at a 30th of a second at 500 millimeters. I mean, crap, you couldn't do that 15, 20 years ago. That's improvement in lens technology. Optical image stabilization, autofocus tracking speed, like Fuji with its linear motors, wham, smacks right in there into autofocus. That's improvement. This is a manual focus lens. It's a low element count. It is exquisite perfection. This is a bucket of tits. This is the lens that has no downside. It's ha 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 ha. You can't improve on perfection. You know, you don't take perfection and reinvent it. It's like it's perfect. You know, it's perfect. The only way this would be perfect is more perfect is if it focused itself. But that's what it is. It's a manual focus lens. It ain't made for sports action. You know, tracking cars going around the track. Or tracking, you know, rabid squirrels up in trees. You know, sticking in continuous high. No, it ain't made for that. This is a true... And by the way, this is why I laugh at anybody. And the Sigma Art lenses average about a thousand bucks. Average, okay? And this used is about $800.
This is why I laugh my ass off if anybody talks about a Sigma art lens. Like, well, that's a manual focus lens. Yeah, you know what? This lens will be lasting four lifetimes. Your Sigma won't last ten years before it croaks and goes, ah! I guarantee it. I guarantee to anybody that thinks that for a thousand bucks, they would uh, be better off buying a Sigma art lens with art means nothing. It means nothing. Be better off spending that thousand bucks on Sigma junk as opposed to like silk, sex, and sugar. You know, Rolex grade perfection. Just absolute. You just stick your ear up to and it goes, F you, I'm the best. Now, what, what, what's that? You know how you stick a, ear, a shell up to your ear and you hear something? This lens goes, screw you, I'm the best. There's none better. <laughs> you know, who would do that? It's like, well, you can have that beat up Volkswagen. Or you could have that brand new Rolls Royce. What's the cost? Oh, they're both the same price. Oh, I'm gonna go with a beat up Volkswagen for the same price. Really? <laughs> this is this is. People ask me, say, why do you pick on Sigma? Because the cost of a Sigma art lens, generally speaking, you could buy perfection like this. That is why I scoff. You know, if those lenses were like two or three, four hundred dollars, be like, okay, whatever. You know, it'll live ten years. You might get your money's worth. A thousand, get yourself a damn Zeiss lens. Damn, really? That is why I scoff. Why, why are you picking on Sigma? You know, I, I love my Sigma. Like, call me. Call me girlfriend when it ain't working anymore in a few years. But there's three different criteria, okay? Those are advancements in lens technology. A 200 to 500 couldn't exist years ago. The ultra wides, the plastic Chinese lenses that I highly praise, the 20mm 1.8G, the 24mm 1.8G, awesome, couldn't have been made 20 years ago. And so far as 35, between 35mm and 400mm, when it comes to prime lenses, no. Other than autofocus and image stabilization, there's no contradiction, and you can't improve on perfection. Oh, sure you can, but that, that's not right. No. These lenses are epic. The people that know where money is no issues, like I'll buy whatever I want. I buy the best, and I'm using this lens. It was, you know, it's based on a design from 60 years ago. This lens will just smack the hell out of you. And if you do like blind tests and show people the images, they'll pick this image 99 times out of 100. They will. They will. Flat out. Prime lenses, regardless of optical image stabilization, and autofocus, which is important, obviously, but not really for portraiture has not improved in ages and ages and ages and ages and ages. There is no contradiction in having a different class and a different set of rules and grading something when it comes to a telephoto zoom with 19 elements or 20 elements in it. I can still highly praise something in that category. Prime lenses are their own category. Wide primes are a different category. Also wide zooms. We have three different categories with totally different criteria for judging them. Wide primes below 28 millimeters. Prime lenses between 28 millimeters and 400 millimeters. Okay. And telephoto, telephoto zooms. Okay. Three different criteria. There is not a contradiction there in me praising the 19 element 200 to 500 millimeter Nikkor. It is what it is. It stands alone in its class. It's the tits. The vibration control is amazing. It's, it's actually not amazing. It's unbelievable. It's like this shouldn't exist. It's too damn good. It's that good. So, where some people saw a contradiction, there absolutely is not a contradiction. It's just that there are three different classes for three different varieties of lenses. And I am a perfectly and 100% logical and consistent in that three separate arena grading criteria. Okay, I hope I made that perfectly clear. I'll catch you, uh, catch you girlfriends later tonight on a live stream maybe. And uh, whatever. I'm going to go to the grocery store and get some cancer-causing diet soda. And someone's going to go to me in the comment section, No, don't drink diet soda. It's bad for you. It'll give you cancer. So what? Everything gives you cancer. you got to die of something. Fuck it. Ha, ha, ha.